Hello guys and welcome back. This is part 6 of a series of videos I'm doing about the minimum data set you need to obtain when you perform an echocardiogram. In this video, I'm going to talk about all the minimum data set you need to obtain when you are in the subcostal view. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. This is the subcostal view and I'm going to show you one by one all the measurements you need to obtain when you are analyzing this view. First, obtain a subcostal view and perform a visual assessment of the cardiac chambers. The right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium and right atrium. Also, visually assess the mitral valve anatomy and the tricuspid valve anatomy. Now assess the left ventricular wall motion and right ventricular free wall motion. And have a look at the interatrial septum and the pericardium. Now let's concentrate on the interatrial septum assessment. Visually assess the interatrial septum and report if the septum appears intact, thick, or aneurysmal. Use color Doppler to check the interatrial septum integrity and to assess for shunts. And consider reducing the Nyquist limit to detect low velocity flow. Let's continue with the pericardial assessment and perform a visual assessment of the pericardium. If you find a pericardial effusion, Measure the diameter and check for any hemodynamic compromise. Next, rotate the transducer in the same subcostal view to find the inferior vena cava and perform an inferior vena cava assessment. Visually assess the inferior vena cava. Measure the inferior vena cava size and perform an inspiratory collapse assessment. In this view, you can also use M mode to assess the inferior vena cava size and the inspiratory collapse. You can also assess the hepatic veins in the subcostal view. Visually assess the hepatic veins also use color Doppler and pulse wave Doppler to assess the flow across the hepatic veins. Now, using a different angle, you can find the abdominal aorta. First, visually assess the abdominal aorta and measure the abdominal aorta size. Now use color Doppler to assess the abdominal aorta forward flow and visually check for any reversal flow. At this point, you can also use color M mode and pulse wave Doppler to assess the abdominal aorta forward flow and to check for any reversal flow. Now remember that you can also obtain short axis views from the subcostal window. As you can see in the picture, from the subcostal view you can visualize the pulmonary artery. This is a great opportunity to perform a full pulmonary artery assessment if you need to. Sometimes the parasternal and apical views are very poor or limited and it's good to know that you can perform a full assessment of the pulmonary artery from the subcostal view. You can also obtain different short axis views of the left ventricle at different levels. This is a great opportunity to have a second look of the left ventricular size and wall thickness to check for any regional wall motion abnormalities and to assess the mitral valve excursion. Also have a look at the right ventricle and the pericardium. 
And to finalize, remember that you can also obtain a short axis view of the aortic valve. And if you need to, you can perform the same assessment as you will do from the parasternal short axis view. Start to perform these views more often and you will be amazed on how many people have really good images from the subcostal view. Now I'm going to show you on a video one by one all the minimum data set you need to obtain when you are in the subcostal view. First, obtain a subcostal view and start with the visual assessment of the cardiac chambers. Then assess the valve anatomy. Check for the integrity of the interatrial septum and have a look at the pericardium. Now pay close attention to the interatrial septum and use color Doppler to check for shunts. And remember to reduce the Nyquist limit to detect for low velocity flows. Now Rotate the transducer and find the inferior vena cava. Visually assess the inferior vena cava. In this view, you need to assess the inferior vena cava size and inspiratory collapse in order to estimate the right atrial pressure. You can obtain the inferior vena cava size by 2D. Freeze the image and measure the diameter at end of expiration. Or if you prefer, place end mode across the inferior vena cava. Here you can also measure the inferior vena cava size and assess the inspiratory collapse. Next to the inferior vena cava we have the hepatic veins. Use color Doppler and pulse wave Doppler to assess the hepatic veins flow. Now find the abdominal aorta and visually assess the abdominal aorta size. Then use color Doppler to assess the abdominal aorta forward flow and to check for any reversal flows. Place the cursor on top and use pulse wave Doppler to obtain the abdominal aorta velocities. Here you can also check for any reversal flows. If you have any doubts about the abdominal aorta size, just measure the diameter by 2D. And you can also use color M mode to assess the forward flow and to check for any reversal flows in the abdominal aorta. And to finalize, remember that you can obtain different short axis views from the subcostal window. You can assess the pulmonary valve, the left ventricular size and wall thickness, and also assess for any regional wall motion abnormalities. You can have a look at the mitral valve excursion, the right ventricle, the pericardium, and even to get a short axis view of the aortic valve. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. See you on another day. Bye.